Now, the White House says it's proud of its efforts to bolster education in war-torn Afghanistan. But a lot of the cash Washington has pumped into the country has vanished. The watchdog responsible for reconstruction in Afghanistan says millions of dollars in taxpayers' money was spent on schools which might not actually even exist. And the price tag for peace may turn out to be bigger than the cost of waging war. Ghanai Chichikan explains. In its promotional videos, the U.S. Agency for International Development will gladly inform you that it has built and refurbished almost 700 schools in Afghanistan, all paid for by U.S. taxpayers. But Afghanistan's newly appointed education minister has recently disturbed this happy image by saying that some of the funds had flowed to so-called ghost schools that only exist on paper. The minister said officials in the previous government in power from 2004 to 2014 lied about the number of schools to obtain more foreign funds. But we learned that this may not be news to the USAID. Nils Kaufman, a former education officer with the agency, checked on the Afghanistan Technical Vocational Institute in downtown Kabul between 2012 and 2013. He says he could never get a reliable account of how many students were actually enrolled at the school. After he raised his concerns with the agency, he recalls one official expressing worry that canceling the institute's funding would create what the official called bad press. We spoke with Mr. Kaufman. Take a listen. The other impression I have is that USAID in Afghanistan was under a lot of pressure to disperse funds. And if any concerns that were raised would slow down the dispersal of funds, uh, I would say that the culture of USAID is to not make any waves. And by bringing up issues, uh, suspending projects, suspending disbursements that makes waves and brings attention to an individual. We've reached out to the USAID. They got back to us with a statement saying, like all USAID projects in Afghanistan, USAID implemented education projects adhere to the agency's strict practices for monitoring their performance and success. This is despite the fact that the agency acknowledged that it could not independently verify the number of students enrolled in the schools. If you read the reports of the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, congressionally mandated watchdog, you will find out a lot more about what was spent and what was actually built in Afghanistan. You will find out about a school in the Kabul province, for example, which is actually dangerous to be in because of the way it was built. You will find out about many instances of waste and potential fraud. The congressional watchdog said the Pentagon could not account for $45 billion worth of contracts in Afghanistan because of the way data was handled. Those are billions of dollars of American taxpayer money. It is difficult for government agencies to avoid bad press because of how glaring some of the instances of waste are. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekhan, RT. Well, as Ghanai said, U.S. funds have been wasted on much more than mystery Afghan schools. For example, they were used to buy 16 Italian cargo planes for local security forces. That's worth nearly half a billion dollars. It was then decided they weren't up to the job and they were sold for scrap for a mere $32,000. And a lavish U.S. military headquarters there cost $25 million. It was never used because President Obama ordered a withdrawal of troops in 2009. Torrential rains have caused a severe deluge in Russia's southern city of Sochi, the host of last year's Winter Olympic Games. Rail tracks, streets and parts of the main airport have been flooded and there are reports of widespread blackouts. It's hoped power will be restored after water is pumped out of the area near a power station. A state of emergency has been declared in some parts of the city. The meeting of Eurozone ministers over Greece has been indefinitely suspended after no deal was reached. It means it will now be up to Europe's leaders to decide on the fate of the country at today's EU summit in Brussels. Now, the main stumbling block between Athens and its creditors is counter-proposals being presented to Athens. Greece says it's standing firm against drastic changes in pension reforms as well as VAT and other taxes. The patience of the Greek Prime Minister, Alexis Tsipras, is being tested to the limits. He's already lashed out the creditors on Twitter. He said Greece is being treated worse than Ireland and Portugal when they were desperate. Tsipras used a tweet to claim creditors either don't want a deal or are working towards other interests. The next deadline for Greece is Tuesday when it needs to pay 1.6 billion euros to the International Monetary Fund.
and it's not only the government but the Greek people as well who are uh, running short of patience. We spoke to some locals in Athens. They should be strict with Greece, but they should be as strict with other countries. And not only with Greece, because we're not the only country that owes that much money to the European Union. We have to go out of the Europe, stop paying them. Just to overtax the private sector doesn't really change nothing. Actually, it just kills the economy. Well, these latest talks in the never-ending Greek saga have sparked even greater interest than normal, as it's the first time Athens has threatened to cut its defence budget. That provoked an immediate response from the NATO chief, who warned against any drastic reductions. Greece is uh, among the allies which uh, spends more than 2%, and I uh, expect uh, that uh, all allies will meet the pledges uh, we made in, uh, in Wales. And those who are above 2% shall uh, remain uh, above uh, 2 percent. Well, currently the Greek defence budget stands at 2.4 percent of the country's GDP. That's the second highest among NATO members after the US. Also, the nation has the largest percentage of military personnel to population of any EU country. And Germany is its biggest European arms supplier. Investment expert John Butler explains why Greece has threatened to cut its military spending right now. I think there are multiple possible explanations for why the defense budget is now being placed on the table uh, by Greece. They're trying to say, well, look, if we're all serious about coming to an agreement, we have to accept the fact that some of the terms may not be beneficial for Germany or France or other countries, but you know, we're all in this together, perhaps to some extent, is the signal there. Greece and other European uh, members of NATO have been under pressure for years by the United States to increase defense spending. Uh, and also the UK has put pressure on other European countries to step up to the plate. So that's another possible reason why Greece has held back um, up to this point from suggesting that they should in fact cut the defense budget when there's been pressure coming from the United States uh, to increase the defense budget. Now, a mysterious giant vortex appeared in a southern U.S. lake. The phenomenon was shot on video, and you can watch more of the footage as well as find out what's caused it on our website, rt.com. Meanwhile, our website is crawling with cats, including one fearless moggy, which scared off an Alaskan bear. And then there's this one. You'll see him in a moment. There he is, uh, which wasn't feeling quite so heroic in the face of a mountain lion.